Let's have a look on removing eye bags. I will share a couple of ways on doing this and as no photo is the same it is good to know a couple of basic methods so you can experiment which works best for the image you're working on. A quick disclaimer before we move on. In order to keep the video short I will not spend too much time in explaining the exact steps in Affinity Photo and the tools used. The idea is more to show you the concept of these methods. I will start with the most controversial method which is using a mesh warp. As you see it did a pretty good job on the right eye. In a nutshell the eye back area is warped towards the eye and the mask is used for a smooth transition. Let's apply it to the left eye back. First we need a copy of the eye back area. For this I will use the freehand tool and select the area we are going to warp. We are going to need a pixel copy of the selection. So I will use my copy selection as a pixel macro to create a pixel layer from the selection. For more information on this macro see the link in the description. Let me rename the layer and here is the pixel layer we just created. We can now add a live mesh war filter to this pixel layer. Let's add a couple of points and move the dark eye back area just below the eye. If you don't have much experience with using the mesh warp it can be challenging first but the more you use it the better you will get. It is a bit of fiddling around but it doesn't have to fit perfectly. We are going to blend and mask it in a minute. As it is a separate pixel layer I can slightly reposition it and then add a mask to it. Using the mask I can use a soft brush with a low flow to mask out the border area so it blends in more naturally with the layer below. Not bad at all. Definitely an improvement compared to the before and the after. Even though this generates a pleasing result it can create stretched pixels and depending on your image this could look very unnatural. You probably then need to spend some time in fixing that by getting the natural texture back. Actually some of the next techniques I'm going to show address this problem and you might use some of these techniques after applying this method. On to the next method which is a simple healing brush. If I open this group up you can see I use two pixel layers to remove the eye bags. Let's quickly recreate it. I will start by adding an empty pixel layer. Once we have our pixel layer I will select the healing brush and in the healing brush settings make sure the current layer and below is selected for sampling. Using the healing brush we are just going to heal the eye bags away by sampling from the area below the eye bags. Again depending on the image this might create a good end result but in this image it looks kind of unnatural. So the first thing I will do is to adjust the blend range of this pixel layer so it primarily applies to the lighter area below. This will get some of the shadows and the texture back from the original but we still have a dark area under the eye. To fix that I'm going to add another pixel layer and use the healing brush again to replace the darker areas by sampling from lighter areas. Perfect. Comparing with the before and the after we can definitely say job accomplished. The next method which is one of my favorites is a very quick and dirty way and usually creates good results. It is what I call the brush with high pass. The idea is quite simple. We brush with a light skin color and use a copy of the image with the high pass filter applied to it to get the details back on the brushed area. Let me demonstrate what I mean. We start by adding a new pixel layer. We now need a good skin color. For that we can use the sampler tool with a setting of average 5x5 five five or higher. Time to take the color sample from the area what I think the color below the eyes should be. Now with the brush I'm going to paint over the eye bags. Notice that I have a low flow brush so the brush is not so powerful and this way I can control the brush intensity. Actually this looks pretty awesome. However when we zoom in Notice that there is no skin texture anymore, which makes it look strange. 
To get the skin texture back, I will duplicate the original image and move it as a child into the pixel layer I just brushed. The original image is now clipped into the brushed area. To quickly demonstrate that, I can quickly change the blend mode of this layer and notice how it is being clipped to the area we brushed. Now that we know it is clipped, let's add a high pass filter to this layer. I'm going to keep the radius low, but as it is a live filter, we can adjust any time later. The final step in the process is to set the blend range to linear light. Awesome! Let's zoom in and adjust the high pass value until we have a nice texture showing up. Pretty cool! The next method is the patch and lighten method. This is a hit and miss method. Sometimes it works and sometimes it takes a lot of effort to make it work. The idea is quite similar to the healing brush. But instead of using the healing brush, we will use the patch tool. I will make a duplicate of the original and using the patch tool, I will replace the eye bag areas. Once we have done that, the result might be okay-ish. Or in this case, it might be very unnatural. So I'll make another duplicate of the original and move it above the patched layer. Once it is above the patched layer, I will set the blend mode of it to lighten. This will bring back some of the eye bag, but we do have a more natural looking result. Using a low flow brush, we can sample a light skin color and gently paint over the darker areas. This makes it definitely much better and by lowering the opacity, we can dim the effect a tiny bit. The end result is pretty okay, but when we zoom in, notice how there is not much left from the skin texture. To fix that, I can modify the blend range of the patched layer. As this brings back some of the eye back area, we can fix that again by painting on the lighten layer. Let's move to the next method, which is one of the fastest and the best ways to remove an eye back. It utilizes the frequency separation and an in-between pixel layer. To demonstrate it, I will duplicate the original layer and move it to the top. Now we can apply a frequency separation. For the sake of speed, I will work destructively, but you can also do a non-destructive frequency separation. In the frequency separation dialog, increase the radius until you have a nice detail in the high frequency without seeing the eye bags, which in this case is around one pixel. After the frequency separation has been applied, you will have two layers, the low frequency and the high frequency. Create a new pixel layer in between. Just as in the methods explained earlier, sample a color from the lighter skin areas and paint over the eye bag area with a low flow brush. Like magic. The biggest advantage of this method is that because the high frequency layer is on top, the painted areas will not look flat and will contain the skin texture. This covers all the main methods to remove an eye bag, which basically all drill down to lightening up the eye bag area while trying to keep the skin texture. There is no one method fits all here. You can definitely combine methods to get the required result. As a bonus, let me share you with a method you probably have not seen before. This is a method I created a long time ago and takes a little bit more steps, but in some situation it works amazing. But then again, in some situations it fails miserably. For example, in this image it worked quite well for what I needed. To compare, let me quickly apply the last method with the frequency separation to this image. In this case, it works okay-ish, and I need to play a lot with the opacity of the painted layer to make it look natural. Let me demonstrate this bonus method. So the steps are quite simple. First, you make a copy of the original and patch the eye bag, similar to what I have shown earlier. Once it is patched, we are going to take another copy of the original and move this on top of it. Now comes the interesting part. I can change the blend mode of this original to difference. Pretty awesome. This will exactly show us the eye bag. In order to use this, I will need to do a merge visible so we get a copy of what we're seeing right now. As I don't need the other two previous layers, I can disable them. 
On the newly created black layer, I can apply the Add Blend Mode. This effectively removes the eye bag. It looks a bit unnatural, but we can get some details back to make it look more natural. And the trick here is adding a Gaussian Blur Live Filter. By controlling the blur radius, we can control the amount of detail coming through. Pretty awesome! As mentioned, this method does not always work, but when it works, it creates a pretty good result. Remember that these methods shown in the video are the basic techniques for removing the eye bags. For a perfect removal, you probably will need to spend quite a little bit more time and effort by combining multiple techniques. For example, this image is quite challenging and I want to go a step further. As you can see, I'm spending quite a bit of time to make it look perfect by applying multiple steps, color corrections and some creativity to achieve the result I'm happy with. The intention of this video was to share the basic techniques with you so you can start experimenting and perfecting these steps to achieve the result that you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching again and until the next video.